Welcome to the Shades of Havana podcast, where we explore the rich history and culture of one of the world's most iconic cigar-making cities. Ybor City has been synonymous with premium cigars for over a century, thanks to the pioneering efforts of visionaries like Vincente Martinez, Ybor and Julius Caesar, J.C. Newman, and the countless families and businesses that followed in their footsteps. From the bustling cigar factories that once lined Ybor City streets, to the boutique shops and lounges that dot the city today, Tampa's cigar industry has left an indelible mark on the city's identity and character. Join us as we sit down with the industry experts, passionate enthusiasts, and local legends to uncover the stories, traditions, and innovations that have made Tampa Bay the cigar capital of the world. Whether you're a seasoned enthusiast or a curious newcomer, we invite you to light up, relax, and journey with us into the fascinating cigar capital of the world. Welcome to Shades of Havana with your host, Michael Doyle. Shades of Havana was brought to you by celebrating their 75th anniversary, Porsche Tampa, the global leader in two-way cigar humidity control, Bovida Inc., award-winning air purifiers, Rabbit Air. Turn your garage or basement into the ultimate man cave with Man Cave King. When you're looking to purchase or refinance your home, fund your bliss at Bliss Mortgage. For the latest styles in golf and beach apparel, Fluke Apparel Company, premium quality lifestyle eyewear with 100% mineral glass lenses, Otis Eyewear, and Treasure Awaits. Visit Tampa Bay. Welcome to Shades of Havana. I'm your host, Michael Doyle. We are here at the Corona Cigar Company in Tampa, Florida, formerly known as the cigar capital of the world. As we've mentioned through the previous episodes, this has been a historic weekend capturing not just the cigar smoking community, but Tampa as a whole. We are surrounded by some of the most influential businesses and cigar enthusiasts from around the world, but most importantly, here in Tampa uh, Bay. So I am here smoking a Brick House, uh, which is a fantastic cigar. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you're smoking? Sure, my name is Chris Sabio. I'm smoking a Metropolitan Maduro, like the dark, robust flavors that this one gives. So yeah, what you smoking? Uh, my name is Jeff Houck, and I'm smoking an Asylum 13. Uh, love the flavors of it, but it fits my hand, which everything else looks like <laughs> some sort of Tipperillo. <laughs> so, you know, I go for gauge sometimes. And I'm Rod Weber. I'm smoking a La Unica. I am uh, associated with Shades of Havana for a few years now, the technical director, and um, I came along for the ride. He's more importantly uh, than a technical de director, he's a business partner, really the staple of our show. Uh, you know, when you think about where we were, its origin, you know, pre, during, post COVID pandemic, uh, we filmed 20 plus episodes at the Jersey Shore. This is our first historic touchdown here in the former cigar capital of the world. You wanna talk about historic milestones. It's not just about what we're doing, it's about who we're doing it with and Jeff, you know, the other day we were incredibly blessed and honored to have Andrea Gonsmart uh, join us. Uh, and from what Eric Newman had said, they've been trying to do it for some time and Shades of Havana made it happen. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, talk about what Tampa means to you and what it means also to be a part of the historic Gonsmart uh, group. You know, I, I, I joke about it, but it's true. Miami's Miami, Orlando's Orlando, but Tampa's Florida. And the heart of Tampa is Ybor City. And cigars run through their DNA. Cigars and food. Tampa is a great cigar town, but it's a, it's a great food town that's kind of been allowed to sort of marinate in its own culture. Um, I can't think about cigars and food in a separate way. It's, uh, you know, it's what the narrative of Ybor City is, obviously. And obviously, the Columbia has been there since 1905. So to work for a company not only that has meaning in Tampa, but also has um, you know, 118 years of history, five generations of family ownership, which after the third, it's, it's like you know, decimal points as to the number of people who've been uh, around that long. Um, Andrea is a great representation of the fifth generation. I get to work with them. I feel like every day I go to work, I get to ride the unicorn. There's nothing like it anywhere. Um, you know, they have multiple locations around Florida, but then they also have five other brands that they, they created. And um, I've never worked for a, a brand that was beloved before. 
And when people go to the Columbia, they show, they take people there to show them what the food used to be, like the history of Tampa. And our other restaurant, Yulele, is where they show them the future of it. But everywhere we do it, we tell Tampa's story through food and each concept. Now, Jeff, uh, I want to take it back to you for a second. You know, you think about uh, different places, you know, where you look to touch down, you look to open up a business. You know, when you think about the research and all the back end information that goes into opening up a restaurant, you're talking since 1905. Right. You know, you need the community and the city support in order to know that you have trust and that, they, that you can believe in what it is that they have for the vision of the future. What is Tampa over the past few years? How has Tampa proven to you that they're committed to rebuilding and restoring and making this great city a, you know, a phenomenal place? I think anybody who's come to Tampa within the past 15 years, if they've been through that 15 year period, they've seen this explosion of interest in Tampa. And it's sort of blossomed in a way that um, other places have not, especially post COVID. Post COVID has been a, a, an influx of Californians, Texas, uh, New Yorkers, everybody who lived in more restricted places. And Tampa has always been a place that invited everyone. Um, you know, the thing about Tampa is what's happening now is not new. It was the early story of Tampa as a boom town for cigar workers and cigar manufacturers. It lived through its food. It had huge amounts of construction, which is exactly what you're seeing now. It just went to sleep for a little while. And so now you're seeing basically Tampa's story reborn for another generation. Um, I, I can't believe that I get to live here at this time and to see it actually happening. It was starting to take off before COVID and then obviously COVID did what COVID did. And then I thought, well, we'll see if it continues. And it actually went on an, an even higher trajectory after that. And the people who come to Tampa now, they want to learn about the culture because they're thirsty to be, uh, to feel like this is home. And one way to feel like this is home is to smoke cigars. Yeah. Another way is to live through its food. And there isn't a big project in Tampa down at the airport, not any kind of development that doesn't have food as a tent pole for everything that they're doing. It's absolutely spectacular. You know, you think, you know, five generations, you know, they, in today's world, you know, surviving three years as an entrepreneur, you know, we're in our third year, you know, nothing is easy anymore. And when you can think about the sacrifice, not just from the employees, but from the investors and, you know, from, you know, even, you know, everybody who's had a helping hand, you know, in order to have a good business, you have to offer good service. And it's really, you know, coming from the local neighborhood and those that visit Tampa, right. you know, that come out and continue to support. So it's a compliment to you, a compliment to the team and to the family, you know, right. for the great work that you do. Now you live here in Tampa, I believe here as well, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. Now, were you born and raised in Tampa? I was not, I was born in Chicago, okay. but I grew up in San Diego, California. And in a lot of ways, I feel like Tampa kind of feels like this San Diego of, of Florida. Okay. You know, because it it's, it's home to me since 2017. And uh, and since I've been here, the, the growth, like you said, the explosion has been tremendous. I, I work in the real estate business now. Okay. And just to see the, the property values, the influx of people from out of state, it's just, it's good for business. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And now, are, uh, do you have family here? Yes. That's one of the reasons why I chose to relocate here okay. to Tampa, because of the, all the family I have here in Tampa, Orlando, um, and all around Florida. Well, you, you talk about family, not just in the restaurant business and you know the community of what you built, but you also think about the family of what we have experienced here just by visiting a few locations, traveling and filming B-roll here in town, being a part of this historic city and this is the historic you know, former cigar capital world. Rod, I don't know when the last time you came here and if you can recall, what does it feel like to be a part of this? Um, well, I've, I think I've been to Tampa once. I'm trying to remember, it's like 20 years ago. Uh, I used to have a different life. Uh, I was on the other side, on the front side of the camera as an actor and performed here in the city. And I just remember going out at night and having fun. That's 20 years ago, so I don't really remember that. But as I <laughs> come back this time. But you had I, a good time. I had a good time. Okay, good. I, I remember being on 7th Avenue and possibly going to a club or two. But um, coming back, like I didn't remember anything. And then when I got here, I'm like, I feel like I've been here before. Yeah, I've been here before. But. Uh, the hospitality on the restaurants we went to, we went to the Columbia the very first night we got here, and, uh, or the uh, lunch, and uh, had an amazing lunch, and uh, the wait help. Can, can you recall what you had? Uh, it was pollo con checo or something like that. Pollo mancheco. Mancheco, that's yeah. pretty. That's pretty good. It's Close. Okay. Con checo, mancheco. I mean, we've um, only filmed 12 episodes in three days, so I mean, the fact yeah, that you can well, recall, and I was obviously it meant something. 
with all the prep that we had to do for this, I was pretty much brain dead by the time we <laughs> flew in that morning. Right. Um, but um, but uh, the, first of all, the food was outstanding, and the the decor was just like so historic, and and we had tons of questions for our wait for the waiter waitress, and and uh, had a great meal. But um, ever since then, we every place we've gone to, we went to some, eat some steaks. We've been to other. Uh, places to have cigars and just found it very accommodating and friendly and and the, the, the people we're hanging out with were you know strangers just chatting away and ha finding something to talk about very easily and quickly and and uh, I would say it's a very friendly town and that uh, easy to get around I mean we've gotten you know we, we've been around yeah. to a, a few places here and it's, yes we have Yes, we. Have. I mean, I have to give another compliment to you and your team. Uh, I said to Rob when we left your restaurant, uh, I literally had done my Coke, and in the middle of taking my last sip, there came another Coke, and I said, where did she come from? <laughs> uh, you know, and also, too, I mean, when we sat down, I, I can't recall the room, but there were 1,700 seats. So we have, we have 15 dining rooms, a possible 1,700 seats. We have the only flamenco troupe that has a residency that performs six nights a week. Nice. I mean... The thing about it is that's great, and you mentioned about it, about our staff, is that um, I think it's something like 25% of our staff at all of our Columbias have been with us 10 years or more, which wow. you know in hospitality does not happen. No. George Guido has been a general manager for us for a long time. He's been with us for 60 years. It's like the family that you saw with Andrea Gunsmart, the family treats the staff like family, and they want to be a participant in the history of the Columbia. And the hospitality that they extend is an extension of the hospitality of the family. So what you're receiving is what the family would give you if they were serving you. Well, and, and you know, when you think about this show, you know, our, the idea of it was not just to come down and be a part of the cigar smoking community. Right. Um, and what I'll share with you is that you know this show was not just created for that audience. What it was created for was to create experiences, sure. um, to go through and to have people come together, no matter what uh, race or sex, and to bring people together, share good conversation, you know, and to have a good time, to walk away having had that. Oh, you know, I met so and so, and you're establishing relationships with people from all walks of life. Right. That is what happens here. But when you think about the longevity of the um, uh, the Columbia Restaurant Group, you know, it's equally as important to know that where you are isn't where you plan on going, right. and to know that you have the support from the community. Visit Tampa Bay is one of our proud sponsors. It's been an incredible uh, opportunity working with them, you know, as they have guided and steered us to historic landmarks here. You know, but most importantly is you have to believe in the vision of what they have. What is it that makes Tampa so uh, special to you? So Tampa, unlike a lot of big cities, I and mean, it's a big city now, it's this megalopolis, Tampa, never sectioned off into neighborhoods. It wasn't like the Cubans lived here and the Spanish lived here and the Italians lived here and the Germans lived here. Because of the cigar factories, they all worked together, they all intermarried, they all made families in different parts of the city, but it is, it is literally that same tradition coming all the way through where if you're new here and you come correct and you have the right attitude, a little money helps, you're in. There's no buy-in for this. It, you're literally in because everybody here is from somewhere else. Um, that friendliness is in the DNA. Huh. It's so important. You know, you think about DNA. It's like for the DNA of Shades of Havana. You know, we were, I mean, we know where it started. And to be here surrounded in the cigar or former cigar capital world, to think about how far we've come. We're not, we don't have the, the, the rich tradition and legacy of 1905. But to be here with these special people, how much that means, and to be here with this great uh, city. Uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to be right back.
Shades of Havana and Cigar Journal thank you for celebrating and watching our historical J.C. Newman 128th year anniversary series. As a sign of appreciation, we'll give you a one-year free subscription to the digital magazine. Access the best information on the global cigar world at Cigar Journal. Scan the QR code and apply the coupon code SOH23TAMPA prior to checkout. What's up, everybody? Chris Payne here, CEO and founder of the Fluke Apparel Company. In honor of this historical event, the Fluke Apparel Company will be offering a nice little discount for all you Shades of Havana, you cigar enthusiasts, conversational enthusiasts. Um, all you need to do is go to flukeapparelco.com and at checkout, enter the letters SOH and you will receive a 15% off discount of your entire purchase. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, we are a beach and golf apparel company formed right here at the Jersey Shore. And we are excited for you guys to be a part of our family too. Visit Tampa Bay. And we're back. Uh, we're celebrating the uh, 128th year anniversary of the J.C. Newman family. Uh, we're also celebrating an anniversary of the 1905, the Gaspart uh, family. Uh, also, one of our proud sponsors in Porsche, 75th anniversary. Seems like anniversaries are happening everywhere. In the city, that is a special place. Now, you talked about moving from Chicago. How long did it take for you to adapt, to feel comfortable, to feel like you were a part of this great place? So I was born in Chicago. I grew up in San Diego. So I was kind of used to the, the tropical kind of weather. So the transition was pretty seamless. I think what was different was, you know, transitioning from the, um, the fact that there's no state income tax here. And emission laws. That's important to a lot of people. Yeah. That makes it a lot smoother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah lots Absolutely. And uh, being a car enthusiast like myself, there's no emission laws. So here you can modify your car, you can put some cool turbos and exhaust systems, and the government's not going to come knocking on your door telling you you can't do it. You know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever, once you moved here, thought about moving back? Not to move back, no, but to visit, yes. Okay. Yeah. Rod, now, if you look back at the past weekend that we had, you know, there was so much, um, you know, there's so many influencers that came across from various industries and spaces, you know, their knowledge was just unfathomable. And sure. when you think about what it is that they offered, where they came from, what is it that when we think and go back home that is going to be a takeaway for you? Uh, wow, the rich uh, history that I was not aware of until we decided, until you helped us decide to come here. Uh, and made these connections, um, like I really didn't know. And uh, coming here, I'm like, wow, there is a cigar capital of the world in the U.S. <laughs> in Florida and Tampa. That makes complete sense because of the locate, you know, the locale and where it is f to where cigars are made. Um, but I, I have a question. I have to interrupt here. Um, is it everywhere in Tampa that there are roosters wandering around <laughs> crowing, or is that just Ybor City? <laughs> only, only in my dreams. No, Ybor City <laughs> is where they're protected. Okay. And it's a direct lineage to <laughs> the early days when owning livestock was prestige. Ah. People would have uh, cows, they would have chickens, they had all different kind of livestock. Um, and chickens now are so beloved that they are protected by law. I love them. Yeah, I think, and they're beautiful. Oh my God, some of these roosters were like, <laughs> uh, like I took some pictures because right. they're so incredibly beautiful. And they're crowing and, um, you know, we hear them in the morning, I have earplugs, luckily, but, uh, and there's like seven roosters crowing around our house. Yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to get around in Ybor City without coming into contact with them. You know, there's a lot of roosters in Key, in Key West. Yeah. So you see the migration of people, they went from Key West up to Tampa, you know, huh. for the cigar industry. Um, they carried on those practices of having their own livestock. I love it. I, I thought, I think I, I thought people are, just... I think they're great. I think they're awesome to have in the neighborhood. I thought people just piled them up and dumped them up into our own backyard. So a lot of people who have backyard roosters, by the way, will dump them in Ybor City because they know they're protected. 
And there's actually a guy who owns the uh, who, who runs the Ebor Chicken Society. Yeah. And he goes and he helps injured chickens get up uh -huh. into their roost at night to protect them. I mean, people love the roosters because yeah. there's nothing like it anyway. I, I love it. Like I said, I think it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Jeff, what is it about the Gaspar family that uh, really attracted you to want to go work for them and to continue to be the face of the marketing, you know, the VP of marketing? So I, I was a food writer for about a dozen years at the Tampa Tribune. And so I wow. covered the family and I was actually embedded when they were making their Yulele restaurant. I was embedded for two years before I wrote a story. Once the story ran, I, I you know, had a great relationship with everybody. And there was a point at which I was like, well, I see where newspapers are headed. And I called them and I said, listen, if you ever any openings, that'd be great. And they said, come on by. And I said, listen, I don't know any about marketing, but all you do is tell stories through food. If you look at the menu, it's a 12, it used to be 16 pages. And almost every menu item has some sort of story attached to it. I'm like, we could do that all day long because there's an emotional connection when you eat food with that. a story that people can then evangelize and say, oh, I remember when I had the manchego or I had the Cuban sandwich and that sort of thing is priceless. Right. And if you're, if you're a storyteller, these people are natural story. We, we're sort of in the marketing department, we're almost amateur archivists. You know, we archive everything. They've kept everything for five generations, and I'm not joking about that. Wow. Pictures, documents, everything. So to right. have somebody who appreciates their own family history as a parallel to the history of Tampa, I mean, there, there isn't any other job like that or any other family you can work for who have that sensitivity to what they mean to a city. You know, for me, you know, I also have an appreciation for food. I absolutely love it. But for me, you know, when you think about wanting to create history. Yeah. To me, this is it. You know, this is the start of what we have done together. You've been doing it for a long time. Yep. This is the start of our brand new relationship. Right. You know, to be a part of this magical place and, and all that it offers. You know, you are in real estate. And, you know, when you think about people moving down, wanting to leave California and New York, how have you seen your business blossom uh, into ways, you know, have, do you have the city support? Like, how has your business changed over the past three years. It's funny you mentioned that it's three years. I've actually been in the real estate business for three years. Okay. So the pandemic real estate market was kind of, I just got thrown in with the wolves. Mm -hmm. And it was like shooting fish in a barrel because so many people were realizing that they could work their remote jobs and work anywhere in the, in the country. So they realized Florida, more so Tampa, was an ideal place to be. So I got a lot of business during that boom. And I still am to this day. Tampa is still a hot spot. And um, I owe my success to my mentors, obviously, in the real estate business, but a lot of it is my social media marketing. I have a strong presence online. I do a lot of attraction marketing, so people reach out to me on, on my Instagram, Facebook, you know, and get a lot of referrals. So a, lot, a lot of great success in the real estate business. That's great. Yeah. Now, Jeff, are you a big cigar enthusiast yourself, or? Am I a big cigar enthusiast? Or, or a big, big cigar? Big cigar <laughs> it's a big what is that gauge? This is uh, this is at least 153. I think. Oh wow! No, I love a sound because it fits my. You know, I'm kind of like welder's mitts for hands. <laughs> but I mean, I love all the J.C. Newmans and all the Fuentes. But when I I just saw that they had Asylum here for the first time, I was like, oh, it's like Christmas morning. So when I moved back to Tampa, I was lived away. I grew up in St. Pete, but we moved around. I was in Alaska. I was on the east coast of Florida. Wow. When I moved back to Cigar City, I was like. Um, I don't know how it can get any better. And so, so I, have a hum I have two humidors in my office. Wow. I mean, it's just, that's the way we live our life. Okay. And, um, you know, I just feel very proud that it's not just sort of a leisure activity. You're smoking history here, you know, to go to the last place that it manufactures cigars in the United States and it's family run for four generations. And our family, the Gonsmar family is so close with theirs. I think that says everything about Tampa. You know, it's it's a big town, but it's very insular when it comes to um, the families that have been here for a long time. And there's a lot of fourth and fifth generation families here. Now, I want to take it back to you for a second because yeah. you talk about generational. Uh, Vincetti Martinez Ebor yep. spent a great deal of time bringing 200 cigar manufacturers back to this great place yep. uh, and only for the uh, Cuba embargo to take it away. What do you think that is uh, the secret to survival or secret to success for the Gonsmar family as to being able to stay around and continue to, you know, build their business and continue to be the staple, you know, not just cigars, sure. but to be a staple, which is why it was so important for us to touch down and to have you all be a part of this right, show thank you. and to touch down in Tampa and to highlight Tampa as a whole. I think that they, as Richard Gonsmar, Andrea's father says, if you're standing still, you're falling behind. 
So there's a lot of things that the Columbia that people see at the Columbia about the history and the decor, and that's great. But they behind the scenes are things you never see that they're constantly advancing and pushing and pushing to either give better quality product, better sourcing, better uh, hospitality. They never stop trying to improve. Beyond that, we don't advertise. We have a non-advertising policy. They probably do, why I didn't get a call back. Well, it's beyond that though. What it is 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 they give. Uh, millions each year to charity. We have a, a, a charity that runs all September called Community Harvest, where 5% of every check we donate to a charity of the guest choosing. Oh, wow. And they've done that for 25 years, going on 26. And, and those millions of dollars that go to those organizations in each one of our cities, St. Augustine, Sarasota, Clearwater, Orlando, and Tampa, it, it, it means something on an emotional level that advertising couldn't touch. So they understand the need to get in and help people through the the um, the benefits of having a Columbia in their in their community, and that's just that's just the way they operate. They think of others first. You know, um, the family is one of the most gener generous families I've ever known. Well, you, and that's really important that you just touched on because one of the things that not one of but the main um, plug has been that the Gosport family gives back across the board and you're not just there for your customers you're there for its people and you know when you think about uh all the good that you do you know it only creates more and builds and re, you know re uh it reminds people that you are gonna you're here for you know for a long time you want to be uh the continued pillars and staples in the community well, during uh, during covid we kept paying the employees 401k, we kept paying their salaries, kept paying their health insurance, nice. and the and the C-level executives made 9,000 meals a week for people to pick up for their families. And it's just because they're family. When I say that they're family, they're family. And that sort of thing is what helped us, like when we came out of COVID, where everybody else was looking for employees, we had them. Wow. And everybody struggled, we, we could use more employees like anybody could, but that investment during that two months of time when we were closed, mandated be closed, um, meant that we would succeed beyond our dreams. Like we keep having record year over record year. And that to me was the investment in COVID. And it goes back into what you said before. There's a reason why 25% exactly. of the people continue to stay well, on board. they drew on the examples of what the second generation did to get through the depression and prohibition, third generation, World War II, yes. urban renewal. They yes. drew on all those lessons and said, you know what we did last time? We invested back in the restaurant and back in our employees and we were able to survive as a result. And that worked again. Yep. Wow, awesome. Rod, I, you know, I have to ask you, you and I, we don't smoke a ton of cigars. We are here at the, at the former cigar capital of the world. You're behind the camera, you're doing, you bring all this project creation to life. What is it meant to you to watch and to hear all these shared sentiments and stories behind the camera? It's been, been a complete uh, awakening to uh, a whole culture I wasn't privy to. Um, I, I love sitting down and having a cigar now with uh, different people. Um, I do feel like it's the modern day peace pipe, but it's really not modern day. They've been doing it for centuries right. you know, all over the place uh, in, in the South and in Cuba and you know, in the Caribbean. Uh, what, what are the, What'd you call it? Central America? Is that, would you say? Caribbean, Central America, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Cigars make friends, man. Yeah, it does. It's, it's really fu fun. I talk to people as if I've been talking to them for the last couple years. It's like, it's just a barrier comes down and you're like talking about anything you want and um, without judgment and uh, find out what you have in common with people. Uh, you probably hear some opinions you're not, you haven't heard, but at the end of the day, you walk away going, oh, I just learned a new opinion on something. But to me, you're one of the brightest people, and I'm not saying that for a stroke here as a business partner, you're one of the brightest people I know. When you leave the takeaway, what does it mean to you to go through and understand its importance? Because you are educated on so many different levels. You know, you are, you know, when we have conversations, you go into different layers and depths. You know, when you walk away not having known about cigars, like what is that, what type of state power does that have into like wanting for you to like want to continue to push forward, push Shades of Havana in a way to where we continue to promote the program, continue to promote these great businesses, these great cities? Well, I think it's exciting to be sort of on a cutting edge. I mean, there are dozens and dozens of podcasts about, you know, cigars. Um, we've created something more unique, uh, something that I think can reach a wider audience and, uh, and a repeat audience 
that uh, and informs people of things they did not know about cigars, did not know about cigar accessories. Um, and uh, I think that we have a chance to really make, uh, to help build some cigars uh, smoking in a way that's never been done before. So with the use of media, with the use of, uh, you know, so, uh, not so, well, social media too, but uh, you know, a chance for everyone to, to learn more uh, there's a lot of people out there that don't know about cigars or are just starting and they're intimidated by all these things they don't you know know about cigars and we're help shedding light on on these uh, little details that help make someone go wow I think I want to try a cigar now and uh, wow it's not unhealthy like you know we know cigarette smoking to be unhealthy we they banned smoking in every single state in this in this country and most restaurants and such and and now we uh, we're bringing to light that this is different. This is something different than that. This is something more about community, more about uh, socializing, and um, and with no harm to anyone. Well, we can only hope that one day we'll have the longevity that the Gonspar family has created. Yeah. Um, I, I only hope that you, uh, with your children and your future children, you will be able to carry on a legacy. But you know, it truly has been an experience in and of itself to touch down, be a part here at the Corona Cigar Company. Uh, J.C. Newman Cigar Company Warehouse um, to come across so many uh, incredible people and good-hearted people too. You know, it's not just about the stories we share here on the camera, but it's about the relationships that we uh, create when it's off. And yes, you know, here it is a show, it is entertainment, it is cigar, but when we walk out of here, we walk out of here having formed a bond, created an experience, and also uh, had a good conversation as well. So on that note, we do appreciate all of you coming out. Um, thank you for that. And uh, our only question is, what, what are, are you smoking? smoking? Shades of Havana with guest host Michael R. Doyle and special guests Chris Sabio, Jeff Houck, and Rod Weber. Co-producers John P. Doyle, Steve Zimke, Kara Guayardo. Producers David Zimmel, Erwin Sternberg, Ricky Rodriguez, Reinhold Widmeyer. Executive producers Sean Sternberg, Michael R. Doyle. Directed by Rod Weber. Created by Michael R. Doyle and Rod Weber. Camera and sound Charles Rodriguez and Oscar R. Urdaneta. Editor Steve Zimke. Special thanks to Charles Rodriguez at Big Boy Media Group. The Detour Duo Tony and Sarah, travel content creators. Senior editor and chief of Cigar Journal Reinhold Widmeyer. Co founder of West Tampa Tobacco Ricky Rodriguez. And thanks to Jeffrey Borshowicz, president and CEO of Corona Cigar Company, for allowing Shades of Havana to capture the beauty and unique setting of Corona Cigar Company Tampa. Shades of Havana was brought to you by Tampa Porsche, Bovida. Rabbit Air, Man Cave King, Bliss Mortgage, Fluke Apparel Company, Otis Eyewear, and Visit Tampa Bay. Shades of Havana and Cigar Journal, thank you for celebrating and watching our historical J.C. Newman's 128th year anniversary series. Access the best information on the global cigar world. Everything that happens in the premium cigar industry, news, launches, personalities, awards, and above all, our cigar rankings and blind tastings. Scan the QR code where you will receive a free one-year digital subscription to Cigar Journal. Our sponsors' websites and phone numbers are also provided in the show notes. When you visit our sponsors, you're helping them and helping our show. And if you enjoy Shades of Havana, we hope you tell your friends and give us a great rating wherever you get your podcasts. All opinions expressed by the Shades of Havana participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Shades of Havana, Inc., a subsidiary of MRD Productions, LLC. Shades of Havana is an MRD production.